What is good, Lottery Sox fam? I missed you guys. If you didn't know from some of the videos that you missed, I did go on a cruise for a week. That is why I didn't upload too much this week, but I did post two videos for you guys, and one of them was this one, how to go from zero to 100K in one year, what I would do personally starting from zero, and then the next one that was pretty exciting and interesting was Trey's trades and what actually happened to him. Either way, the trip was extremely fun. I missed you guys. The Wi-Fi was awful, of course, if you've been on a cruise ship, but we'll talk about that in another video. What I wanted to cover in today's video are some of the charts and what happened last week, but what is coming forward, right? We're not going to spend a lot of time on what happened last week, but what is happening this week? How are we going to capitalize on it? And what we called out to a T with AMC, Tesla, a couple other plays as well. So without further ado, guys, let's get into it. Thank you so much for everything. And I couldn't do this channel without you guys. And I'm glad to be back. AMC trading at $3.16 was up 8.22% on Friday's close. As you can see, the week I was gone gapped up on the 16th and gapped up once again on the 19th of April. Okay, so we gapped up traded sideways, gapped up once again, and we are sitting on the four hour time frame. What have we been saying time and time again? I have reiterated it. I don't know how many times AMC is likely to bottom. It doesn't have to be on this exact date, but April 15th, we basically bottomed April 15th, if not the very early morning of April 16th. Okay. So we called out the bottom almost perfectly on AMC. Is this the bottom? In my opinion, where we stand, there is no reason why this is not the bottom. If we take a look at what we are tracking with AMC, the same exact time frame is playing out. From this low down here to the bottom, the same exact amount of days, same exact percentages, AMC is now scaling higher. So what do we expect? What do we anticipate going forward? What we're looking at going forward coming into the week AMC all the way coming into May 5th to May 6th, right, is going to play out something like this. You're going to see some more consolidation <clears throat> and then you're going to see a parabolic move higher and that parabolic move higher is going to at least bring us into this zone. Okay, before that time frame, which is $4 to $4.35. So what's going to happen is you may see more gapping up or you may see slight sell off. And in between that is going to be a little bit of accumulation, uh, slight accumulation sideways, slightly down. And then you're going to have that next move up, which is something that I expect going forward for AMC coming into the next couple of weeks. And GameStop, GameStop has been playing out to a T as well. This is just another thing that we have drawn out <clears throat> for GameStop and that is playing out perfectly. Coming into the week, I think GameStop is a good place to set some money. Not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but betting calls I will be looking at. I haven't gotten time enough to take a look at everything, see what the IV is, etc., etc. Keep in mind, I'm running off of two hours of sleep. GameStop came all the way down to this bottom support trend line, the bottom of this wedge. Every single time GameStop hits this wedge, it has large moves higher, okay? And it doesn't hit this wedge too commonly. This is more towards the end of a cycle, which tells me that GameStop is gonna get a nice bounce here. Whether it's delayed and we come and retest it again, or whether we go straight up, I think GameStop is gonna have a nice bounce up close to $12, not quite to 12, but a nice move to $12. We're also seeing Ortex data go insane on AMC. Again, 21.35% short interest, which is the highest we have seen it in a very long time. And again, that is just what's reported to us with over 56 million shares shorted. Now, Ken Griffin recently went against the cat system, okay? And he is basically saying that it is unrightful for the SEC to implement something like this. Well, all of a sudden, the SEC is hit with a new lawsuit alleging mass surveillance of Americans through stock market data. What's happening here is the lawsuit is basically stating that the SEC is illegally collecting data from every citizen who invests in the stock market, which is just for transparency matters, right? But no, it's being contested and hopefully the contest doesn't delay the CAT system from being implemented in May. But speaking of Ken Griffin, speaking of the CAT system, speaking of the SEC lawsuit and all of these ties together, there's also a petition against Ken Griffin and Citadel Securities to ban Citadel Securities and investigate Ken Griffin for fraud and protect investors' interests. So this is already at 14,154 signatures. I will be signing it right now after this video goes up. And this comes after there is talks about illegal stock market manipulation and Donald Trump getting involved, which we're going to probably have our own video on that because there's a lot that goes into it. Overall, 
Interesting, to say the least, Trump media tells Nasdaq short sellers may be using potential market manipulation in DJT shares. Watch DJT stock for some sort of buy the rumor, sell the news type of deal to come out. Easy way to make some money on that. Also, last sprinkle on top, hedge funds, Breven Howard cuts 10% of staff amid poor, poor performance. So another one bites the dust. Finally, Tesla called this out to a T as well. Came up, didn't get a full candle close above this level. Smacked back down, didn't hold support here. Flushed down, didn't hold support here. Flushed down, did not hold support. Now we are at the bottom of this demand zone, which was our price target on Tesla. We said if Tesla breaks under 154, it's coming down to 147. That's exactly what happened. Made a little bit of a gain on Tesla puts, could have held them longer. I'll put that up right here. As well as AMC calls, could have held that longer. I'll put that up right here. Wish I held both longer, but it was hard to balance a vacation and watch my positions. I should have just, you know, set a stop, lowered it, right? Trailing stop, trailing take profit, right? Either way, let me know if you guys made some money on this. Where I see Tesla going from here is something that I haven't had enough time to evaluate. But longer term, I think this is a decent buying opportunity. That is what I have to say right now. SPY flushed down the entire week, 495.16, down 0.87% on Friday. The SPY recently had a 28% rip. 10% decline, okay? This is what the SPY likes to do. This is a healthy correction on the SPY. The SPY has ran 27.9% without getting a cool off. And now we are down 6% correcting from that range. Now keep in mind, right back here in the same channel, right? Just taking this channel. Okay, so let me uh, outline this for you guys so it's easier for you to see. Just taking the channel that the SPY has been trading in, okay? You will see that... The last time it hit the top and corrected, this was a 6.23% correction. We've been scaling higher, scaling higher, hit the top, getting correction, 6%, and now we are on this line. Now, this is the weekly time frame, so the SPY has not closed below this, right? So we're not in any sort of major danger zone. If anything, this is the peak of the pullback. If that is the case, next week, you should see a full candle close above 504 Okay, so that is what we're watching on the SPY. NVIDIA also got absolutely cooked. We called this out, top of the FIB, double top, 950, came down, got smoked, and that is exactly what happened. We have hit one, two, three, four, back to back to back right now call outs. Beautiful, beautiful thing to see. Just to show you that you can make money in these markets, some kid on Reddit turned $800 into $100,000 in one day by gambling on NVIDIA puts. That's a crazy thing to see as well. You're seeing these gains come back like Wall Street bets when markets get volatile like this. Last but not least, crypto. Bitcoin is sitting right under 65,000, broke below out of the wedge just like every single post having the having is now complete we had this wedge we broke below uh this is the 2021 having scaled higher accumulation phase and then essentially broke that high and then had a parabolic move same thing is happening with bitcoin we are now in accumulation phase bitcoin can come down to 54 to 48,000 in the accumulation phase in my opinion and it could last several months so i just want to put that on your radar doesn't have to, but again, I'm holding for uh, the long run, at least towards the end of the year. Also, keep an eye on mining stocks. Mara is testing the FIB at 1650. If we break above this, I'm watching $19 on Mara. Overall, guys, make sure to get in the Discord because I was able to chat with some people in Discord throughout the week, and I was not able to go on YouTube or anything like that to actually update you guys. I'm in there on the daily. We talk stocks and crypto all day long, every day. We have options trading alerts. It's only $3 a month to coffee. Level up your trading journey. Come talk with me and the most amazing people. There are no bad questions. That link is right under the video. Also, if you want 1.5% cash reward match or 10 free fractional shares of the Magnificent 7, just press my link. Open a Moomoo account, the broker, and make a deposit into there, guys. Do not sleep on it. You're getting a ton of free benefits. Both of those links are in the description and pinned in the top comments. I missed you guys. I will be back with another video. I have not even unpacked yet. I love you. Peace.